Hello everyone. After a very long uh, pause, I've, uh, resu I'm resuming the production of some new soft videos. Um, this one is about uh, DataWeave 2.0 mapping on new 4 and more precisely how we can do structural transformations uh, using uh, the nested uh, do scopes. Uh, what uh, we're going to use as the input payload is this XML file. Uh, I'm going to link uh, to the GitHub GIST uh, uh, with this uh, document uh, in the video. And as you can see, this XML file has uh, different hierarchy levels. So basically, there is a list, uh, a sequence of country elements, and each country has a sequence of city elements. And one uh, city per country has uh, attribute capital equals yes, so it marks the capital and what. So each city has a name and population in millions. So uh, this um, uh, XML structure uh, must be transformed to, uh, into something like this, uh, which is a JSON document uh, with an array, an array of, uh, of objects. And uh, each object will have uh, the name of the capital of the country, uh, the country and the continent. So one, for each country, we need to select the cap name of the capital, uh, the country name, and, and the continent. The, this data comes from two different hierarchy levels. So the country name and the continent comes from the level under element uh, country, whereas uh, the capital is one of the cities, which is at a lower uh, hierarchy level. So we're going to see how we can um, perform this mapping uh, using data we um, in a structured way. So we drag here a transform message. We set the metadata uh, for the input payload, which are already defined as a, as a type based on the example. You can see the uh, structure here. And uh, we get, of course, also the sample data of the of the input payload. Now um, we're gonna start uh, yeah, to set the output type to applications like JSON. Uh, we we activate the preview and we have a copy of the input payload. Um, now we're going to work our way incrementally um, using uh, these scopes, as I said. Uh, the do scope is, uh, is a substitute of the using um, construct that was present in uh, new 1.0. Uh, and it's, uh, in my opinion, is more readable because the do scope uh, allows to define a, a block uh, which is similar to the uh, main uh, DataWiz script. So, so in the main DataWiz script, we have a block. We have the header here, uh, which can contain output directive, can contain variable, global variables, type definitions, etc. Uh, the three dashes and the body, um, which expresses uh, the um, the output value. Uh, here in the do scope we have the same thing so we have do and then the braces in the do we have uh, the three dashes the separating the local header this is a header of the do so it's a local scope and uh, uh, we can put a value in the body uh, it's still not syntactically correct because I need uh, some kind of uh, um, declaration in the header of the do so I put a dummy declaration here so it's uh, it's syntactically correct again and this uh, uh, expresses the same thing as before just a payload but <clears throat> the main idea <clears throat> is that the, the do <clears throat> allows the, the define lo defining local uh, variable basically local variables and types and then uh, expressing a value that, uh, that can be assigned to uh, uh, another variable. So if we 
we could assign uh, the, the, these, uh, the, this whole do construct is an expression that could be assigned um, in, to, to a variable. Not in this context, of course, because uh, these, uh, we are in the body of the main script and we cannot uh, declare, declare a var, I have a var uh, definition here. But uh, so we'll work our way. So the first step uh, is that uh, we, we're going to define a scope for the uh, hierarchy level corresponding to the countries, to the sequence of countries. So uh, this is the outer hierarchy level. Uh, we define the variable here called countries and uh, it's payload. Uh, it would be payload.country. Uh, countries dot um, uh, star country, but to, to save some typing, we use the descendant selector. So we um, we skip uh, the countries level and we express or uh, directly with this multi-value selector uh, star country the sequence, the array of, of country elements. So if we if we put countries in the body of this do. we see that it selects indeed an array of country objects. So now, uh, this is the outer hierarchy for, um, if we were working in a procedural language, which uh, DataWave is not, because uh, DataWave is a functional language, we can imagine uh, two loops, one outer loop looping over countries and uh, an inner loop looping over cities within each country. We, uh, we're going to produce the same effect in a functional way via the map operator because the, uh, with the map operator we can operate on, a, on an array of countries. So we, we map this array of countries and we identify uh, the current country in a CTRY uh, variable. And this can be mapped uh, to something else. Of course, this is identity mapping, so it maps into itself. But the idea is we, we, we have produced an array with this uh, local declaration. Uh, and then uh, we uh, map this array into another array. But uh, to go forward with uh, this construct, now we want to introduce a second level of hierarchy because we, for each country, for the current country, we we need to uh, produce. Uh, we need to pretty much uh, operate on the cities within the country. So we do that in a nested do scope. In that nested do scope, I can declare variables which are local to the outer scope. The outer scope is the current country, CTRY. Uh, uh, for the current country, we can, uh, we can define uh, the cities, the cities by, by country. And that uh, so we operate on this variable CTRY, current country. We use again the descendant selector and uh, we select an, an array of cities within each country. So if I put in the body of this inner do scope uh, cities by country, let's select, uh, copy and paste. So we, we see that uh, uh, it's indeed uh, uh, evaluating for each country. For each country, it's evaluating uh, the the array of cities within the country. So now, uh, to uh, what we want to have is the uh, we select only the capital. So, for example, Amsterdam is a capital because in the input payload. The city of Amsterdam has capital attribute equals to yes, and the same for London. We um, we can proceed incrementally, so we don't break uh, the the transform. So we we must be 
or when, when we change, uh, extend our, our transformation, we want to work so we we don't stay for a long time with the transformation in an incorrect state. So let's introduce another variable, which is um, uh, we need to, to, to find out the capital. Uh, to find out the capital, we want to filter, actually, the, uh, we want to filter the array cities by country. This is array. Uh, to filter, uh, we'd like to have a lambda uh, function that uh, allows filtering. So this lambda function produces a boolean, which is true if, if the city is, uh, is operates on a city and uh, produces a true if the city has a is a capital as um, an attribute capital equal to yes so uh, we can define this lambda function as a variable uh, called is uh, capital uh, lambdas are and functions are our data are, are, can be assigned to variables in uh, in uh, data weave So the parameter is city, the input parameter is city, and uh, what this lambda produces is uh, boolean. So um, city dot uh, uh, ampersand, uh, sorry, ampersand uh, at uh, as uh, the attribute selector. So we select attribute capital of the city element in the input. And if this is equal to yes, uppercase yes, then uh, this uh, this produces true. So this this lambda applied to a city element will produce true if the attribute uh, capital is equal to yes. Once uh, once we have this lambda defined, we can then uh, build another another variable or we can produce another variable for capitals uh, with the filter with the filter we filter the capitals uh, sorry we filter the cities by country by using this lambda using this uh, lambda function which is is capital so we operate on the array of cities by country uh, by filtering out uh, all elements uh, in the array which uh, for which the lambda function is capital uh, does not evalu evaluate to true um, so if we put capitals so you see this uh, we we have filtered out the cities which are not the capital, and we are ending up with uh, arrays of arrays uh, where um, we only have capitals. So, next step is to produce uh, the type of object inside that we need. The type of the object need, need, contains uh, attribute name of the city name. We don't need the population in uh, millions, uh, but we do need the, the name of the country and the name of the continent. So this name of the country and the name of the continent are attributes of the country. So, but we can access uh, those attributes because uh, the outer scope is uh, accessible the, via the CTRY variable, which is the, the current country. So. What we're going to do is to map <clears throat> is to map the cap uh, capitals And we produce uh, an object for each of the capitals. This object contains uh, the attribute name, which is the capital name, capital dot name. Uh, 
I, I wanted capital, not capital, sorry. Um, so the, the capital is uh, the current uh, capital, CP. Then we have the corresponding country from the outer scope. CTRY dot name. And we, we get the names of the corresponding country and the same uh, with the continent. So we get uh, the output that we needed. Um, only I'm just gonna reformat it a bit. So it's a bit more visible. Shows a bit better. And uh, and then what's missing is uh, what what we need to do is just to flatten this output array because it has two levels, two two nested uh, arrays, and we don't want that. But then uh, it's just enough. We apply the flatten function to the whole uh, body. We need to put the parenthesis, the closing parenthesis at the end. And here we go, we, uh, we have uh, uh, the desired result. So, uh, important to note as we proceed incrementally, so we, we build uh, the scopes, the do scopes, uh, based on the hierarchy, uh, where uh, we want to iterate on the hierarchy of the, of the input, and then uh, uh, we define variables incrementally to uh, to build uh, to build uh, progressively what we want to to achieve in the output. So uh, always keeping in mind we need to have a working transform almost all the time. Uh, we don't want to break the transform so we then we cannot fix it and then uh, <laughs> we need to go back from uh, almost uh, from scratch. So it's important that. Uh, we we work in this way um, to minimize uh, the risk of breaking what, especially if it's a complex transform. Um, so of course this is a simple, still a simple example. We could have, for example, a join uh, with other data coming from a variable. For example, a join is a very typical joining a payload data from a payload variable. But that shows how uh, with via this do. Uh, nested do scopes and nested maps, uh, we can access data from different hierarchical levels in the input and then uh, restructure uh, the, the output payload, so in a completely different uh, structure. I hope you enjoyed this and then uh, I'll, um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.